Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are in beautiful Southern Colorado with some of my favorite humans and then humans I just met also uh, (laughs) in the world. Everybody, you guys introduce yourselves to um, to our audience and our viewers, starting with Mr. J.R. Hunting himself. I don't need no introduction. I'm Christie's plus one. Okay. Good. That's good. I'm Christie's dad, so probably also don't need an introduction probably not the dad everybody Lewis, knows the Lewis dad Titus. how much of a detailed description do you want i think you should really kind of give a good background whatever is on know, police records let people know what they're in for right now i'm wes yoder i'm here with eagle outfitters doing this hunt with christy now for what was it four years four five a couple rifle hunts a couple archery hunts yeah, four, four, four or five. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. always look forward to seeing you guys. I met Yogi last year, and uh, we had a lot of fun on the mountain. And, and we're glad to have you here. We love hunting with you. You are you fit in that category of one of our favorite humans. I don't know if I qualify for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, You're up. Uh-oh. My name is uh, Jake Elich. Um, this is my first year with Eagle Outfitters. Wes called me down here, asked if I could help out, and I'm sure glad he did. It's been a fun two days for sure. Two well, whole days. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of bugling, a lot of animals, a lot of fun times, a lot of laughs. So it's been a lot of fun. There's been a lot of things that have happened this week. It's been – and you're you're the new person. You're the new, the new seed in this pod. Everybody else in this group, we're all pretty acquainted with each other and um, – I've met you once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> you probably over her by now. No, kind of. He's <laughs> been over me since I was born. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I think he questioned the whole process, honestly, in the first place, but I don't blame him anyway. <sighs> no, I talked Dad into doing this tag, uh, this hunt last year, and uh, we were hooked. It's just a great place to come. And, and I've known Johnny from Eagle Outfitters for, goodness gracious, longer than I care to admit. Um like a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, I remember his son when he was 12 years old and I joked about him being my main squeeze and like crush. And he was maybe slightly heartbroken by the time I married Yogi, but probably really not because I'm pretty, let's face it, I'm old at this point. So uh, <laughs> Trav is, you know, watching him grow up has been pretty fun and, and just feeling like I'm a part of Johnny's family. And um, it's pretty it's pretty awesome to come back to a place that you love the people and you love the landscape and, and that's what hunting's all about. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. Out here. Well there's like yeah. antelope right behind us right too. Right behind us. Yeah, we got a whole herd. I think I counted thirty of them out there and there's one I think about an eighty inch buck out there. Yep. I don't know how to score them, so um I would just look at it and be like, Yeah, that's one I would shoot. <laughs> Well, see, now you're from Wyoming, so you should get lots of practice scoring antelope because yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, I'll have to take lessons from <laughs> Wes on how to score antelope. I don't know. A big one's a couple inches bigger than a small one. That's yeah, right. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's not, there's not a lot of difference that's there. That's the difference between a trophy it's like and mountain average goats. buck. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. a quarter inch makes a big difference on mountain goats even. So. Mm-hmm. Goats are goats. They're all hard to score. Well, just like bears. 
They're hard to judge sometimes too. And we've seen several bears. We've seen yeah. one this morning, seen a bear yesterday. Pretty cool. It's been a fun hunt. Should have bought a bear tag, but we didn't. Well, we didn't really have, we weren't, yeah, I mean, it's okay. We're not here to bear hunt. No. So that's okay. Hmm. Yeah. So seen lots of bulls though. So it's good. Yeah. Good couple days. First morning, there was so much activity. It was insane. Like driving into a party pretty much is yeah. what it was. There's bugles everywhere. And we just had to wait for it to get light. It was so <laughs> slow for a number of weeks. It was hot and yeah. just seemed like nothing was cranked until it finally that cold front hit last weekend. And it was far enough into September. It just got really good pretty fast. Yesterday morning was an elk hunter's paradise. Right. Yeah, everything yeah. went from zero to, like, cranking. 90 miles an hour. Quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, we were in Oregon last week, and just, we heard two elk bugle in a week. Nine days, I think we spent. Yeah. And we were on you know, three different groups of cows in one day. None of them had a bull. And so, it was just really disheartening because the triple-digit temperatures. See, the and problem is you didn't have these guys in Oregon guiding you. Yeah, I did have a collar, which is always helpful. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean that's that's I mean the key to a lot of archery success. I mean, the one of the biggest ways you can easiest ways to be successful is to have a good team behind you. And I, I mean, we see it online and on podcasts all the time. Is um, you know who is behind you calling? The only thing better than a good collar behind you is two good collars behind you. Yeah, I'll take credit for that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think well, you did. The other thing too is last week in Oregon was public land obviously so yeah. there's a lot more pressure that combined with the temperatures like the high temperatures and the full moon that kicked in too yeah. all that together you know if you compare you can't really compare it to a, a privately managed ranch like this where yeah. there's no pressure until until prime we time here. until prime time yeah and <laughs> then you're right in the mix and yeah. it's you know it's awesome just the bulls are like we we've, we've been talking about it you can call them across a, across an open clearing here which on public land in Oregon, it probably would have never impossible. happened. You know? I, I've <laughs> never, I've been doing this for 40 years, I suppose. I've never seen a bull get called across the wide open meadow. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that before. And I've seen it twice this week. Yeah. In two days. Yeah. Big bulls. Not. I'm not talking right. little raghorns that come in easy. I'm talking mature bulls. Right. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got called across wide open meadows. It's pretty amazing. Well, you the, guys are good though. The nice thing about where we're at, I think in the rut too, is these bulls aren't really that established in their hierarchy of herds and everything right now. And there's a lot of them that are still moving around looking. Um, and so, you know, you have younger bulls that are going to start getting kicked away from herds, but those older, more mature bulls, like the one you took, uh, you know, that's a, that's an eight to 10 year old bull. And, and you know, I'm not, I don't think, I don't think he had cows, but he, you know, they, they're at that point right now where they're, they're looking to go gather them. Um, so the timing was really good, I think. A lot of years it seems to be a lot sooner or earlier in the month. Yeah. Uh, we started hunting first of September and at a well-managed private ranch, and it was just hard to get anything going. And I'm sure, Jake, you were out too. Yep, about 20 minutes east of here. and <clears throat> It was quiet, 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 and dry and hot. Mm-hmm. And mosquitoes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, one thing about it, these well-managed private ranches, it's still wild elk. They're they're wild elk. They're no different than elk on public. It's the same. It's just the hunting pressure is different. Yeah. yeah. Little, yeah. But, you know, I see a lot of public land doesn't have any pressure. Right. You know, right. you get, most of the places you get two miles off the road and there's nobody. Well, that's right. I'm just, yeah. I was just comparing it in general yeah. to where we were last mm -hmm. week, you know. Because there's a lot of pressure there. And but even last also, week, I mean, we saw a lot of vehicle traffic, like, on the roads. But as soon as you get off of them, we never saw people walking through right. the woods necessarily. I didn't feel like we were overcrowded with people. No. Um, no. And it was also really interesting is you really didn't have to go that far off the road to get into elk. Um, you know, growing up, Dad always wanted to kill me on elk hunts. Death and, marches, yes. Oh, Lots of death marches. Geez. Like walk all day long. Like we don't have to walk all day. We can go eat lunch somewhere. I'm older and wiser it Seems now. like I'm the key to public land success anymore is the backcountry hunt isn't what it used to be obviously um if, if you packed in you know a multi-day backcountry hunt you could get away from people and into animals almost regardless yeah. well everybody's doing it now yeah. 
all the gears marketed towards it. There, I mean, you can do that for seven days where you probably got the same weight as back in the day. You might have three or four days to hunt. Yeah. Yeah. But you find those pockets even close to the road. Right. I mean, the elk know what's going on. For sure, a mature bull, they're 8, 10, 12 years old. Some of those bulls, they know the game a lot better than the hunters do. Yeah, they do. They just need to find a hole. It, it And a lot of times, it can be close to a road. Right. Just yeah. They know the terrain a lot better than most hunters do, for sure. And they will find that little black timber hole somewhere, you know, just off a highway even, you know, and they sit in it. Well, that's what we encountered. I, I, there was a hole that we kind of, we didn't go to because I had other spots that we had went hunting and I told Yogi I'm like there's always bulls in here every time I've been in this hole there's always a bull in there and, and it was true last week too it's just they just weren't I mean it was it's it's incredible what changes in just like three or four short days with how they respond to calling and and everything you know if we'd uh, <clears throat> set up a little bit differently ahead of the hunt I think you know we figured out a spot where they like to cross and they're watering and um if we'd have set up there, we'd have had a different outcome, I think, mm -hmm. you know. But We've seen that lots of times, though, where, I mean, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. Nobody's talking, and all of a sudden, one day, everybody's going crazy. Yeah. It, it just, it, I don't know what it is, but the hormones kick in, the moon phase or the whatever. First cow, the, the, you know, the, the first cow kicks off. Yeah, the first that's cow what it kicks off. That's probably a lot of it, the first cow yeah. kicks off. The first and day up here, they were bugling nonstop. Yep. I mean, from before daylight to... I don't know, 10 o'clock probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. Then uh, the second morning we were out, it was you'd crickets. hear their random bugle here and there, and they just wouldn't, mm -mm. they weren't callable. Yeah. And then we kept checking different spots, and what was it, 930. Yeah, and it was like 90 degrees. Almost yeah, it's 90 in. degrees, it's 930, and it, I'm, I'm ready for my nap, you know, because I'm old. And... Uh, Wes said, no, no, we got to go down there. We, we got to go down there and check this spot out. Because we'd been there the night before, and there was some bulls calling the night before, but they wouldn't come in. And, yeah. and this place, it's a, it's a dark hole. It's a big hole, and it's almost impenetrable. You, you can't hardly walk through it. Oh, my gosh. It's, it is so thick. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's extremely. The only way you can hunt it is you have to call the bulls out of it. Yeah. it otherwise, you're never going to get them. And uh, the first night we were in there, they were they were not coming out. They'd bugle, but they were not coming out. And uh, what a di difference a day makes. The next day, mid morning hot, and they're fired up. So what, you know, what changes? I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure it out. I guess. They always keep you guessing. Yeah. You have to be in the right spot at the right time. Mm -hmm. When those two things align, then it's normally good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then on an archery hunt. It's a lot of things still have to go right. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. What do you think the bull to cow ratio is here? Because it seems like there's a lot of bulls. There's a lot of bulls. Compared to cows, yeah. We generally so. see more bulls than cows here. Yeah. We, I mean, I've only seen, I what, seen a two or three cows opening day, opening morning? Yeah. Uh, well, we saw a few up in that burn up there. Yeah. There's a mob up there, right? Uh, but, but you're uh, also chasing bugles, so keep that in mind, too. Like, when you true. say, well, I'm not seeing a lot of cows, well, you're... You're chasing bugles on a lot of these bulls that aren't with cows yet. They're still gathering. Yeah, and, right. I mean, it's the, like I said, it's a timing thing. So, you know, in another three days when you chase a bugle, it's probably attached to four or five other heads, you know. Right. What I usually see early in the season is the, the bulls are bachelored up. And, and if, if you get to a herd of cows, there's small bulls. The big bulls aren't in with the cows until, again, that first cow kicks off. Mm -hmm. And then the big bulls will come in and lay down the law. <laughs> right. I think overall, though, the, there's more bulls here compared to cows than what we saw in Oregon, for example. Oh man, we oh, had we got into a herd yeah. of fifty cows and it had these tiny five by five just screaming his head off, was living his best life. I, mean, I could not believe how many cows were there. I mean, like when you hear a bull bugle, you think you know they're gonna have four or five, six cows, maybe fifty head. This little pea head is pushing around and I mean <laughs> I was not expecting it and 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 then the other cows we saw were completely alone you know like those bulls weren't interested really at that point much at all yeah. you know the odd one was thinking about it but they were 
you know, the younger ones that were, you know, just more excitable, I guess. And I, I guarantee you that that little bull that was pushing all those cows around is, is now a satellite bull. Yeah, he's not there anymore. <laughs> he's, he's now a satellite bull. Well, they probably they've probably split that group of cows. Oh, up I'm sure. Too, yeah. Into smaller ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know the numbers, or I wouldn't guess, yeah. but I would say there's there's got to be close to fifty fifty here. Right. Yeah. Which you don't which see would groups of twenty and thirty. 40 cows. Right. No. Ever. I've never seen that. And that would explain, right? too, why some of those bulls like to come in like that, you know, because they hear, when y when you guys are doing that rut party thing, you know, with the cow cow mews and then bugling and different angles, different directions, and the bulls get, like, crazy when they hear that. They think, oh, there's, like, t 10 cows up there, you know, let's, let me go pick one up. and It just makes a better scenario mm -hmm. if you got two, three calls going. Right. And we got lucky uh, yesterday. We not only had two good callers, but we had the real deal going. Oh yeah. Be yeah. Because the, the first thing that happened on that setup with, with this bull was two bulls come in to my right, and uh, and they come in behind and they stopped at the edge of the meadow. They wouldn't come out in the open. I come to full draw, and I I held it till I finally had to, you know, my shoulder was almost dislocated, and I I had to let off the bow, and they blew out of there, but they didn't go very far. And when this bull come in, one of the things that brought him across that meadow was there was a real bull over there bugling. He heard the commotion. Yeah, yeah. So we actually got to use a real bull to our advantage. And, and he was hesitating because he, you know, when he first come in, he stopped at 75 yards head on and we couldn't move. And, uh, and he, he knew something was wrong. He knew something was going on. And then that bull bugled over there, the real bull. And that gave him the confidence to come on across that meadow. Yeah. So a lot, it was very, fortunate for us well, that wouldn't happen we had the sun at our it. back just yeah a lot of things went right mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of things went right he, yeah, yeah like you said Stars he was aligned. he was kind of starting to think about oh i better leave yeah, this you, place you could tell he was nervous he came downwind of where he thought the rut party was going on and he didn't smell any cows mm -hmm. you know and then he's, he's like what's Ugh. going on what's right. going on and Something's then that bugle right lit off to our yeah. right and that's when he was like oh okay the party moved over there let me yep. go over that way you know so yeah, it was and then just timing. fortunate for us, there was a nice little bushy juniper about 40 yards in front of me, and when he went behind that, it gave me the opportunity to draw without blowing him out. And as soon as I come to draw, he stepped right out, cornering away, almost broadside though, and he was right at 50 yards. So everything the stars lined up. Before know? that bull came in, you could hear him, but he was a good ways off, and we were focused on this other bull. Yeah, and obviously set up. For the other or, bull. Or a other different bulls, direction. Yeah. And when that bull left. And that well, that bull got quiet. And you and I are like sitting over there. And we, we both kind of got nervous. We're like, eh. You know, once when they're fired up like that, when they just completely shut off, something's usually happened. Like a switch gets flipped. And it's you can feel it almost. Mm -hmm. Like they're just, whatever, something happened. They saw you. They smelled you. Well, what happened was he, he came trotting in and he stopped behind those trees on the edge of the meadow and, and he chuckled quietly. You couldn't hear that probably. He chuckled quietly, right? You I heard did that. hear that. Yeah. Oh, you he, did, he did chuckle. I don't hear anything. I'm, yeah, he, he I'm, heard, I'm, uh, he did that right on the edge of the meadow. But then, I don't know if the wind swirled or something because he bolted out of there pretty quick. And he couldn't possibly have seen you guys. No. No. He was behind trees, you know. All we see were tips of antlers at the time yeah. and all of a sudden he hit the brakes and spun around and bounced out and i think the world or the wind split or swirled just for a tick yeah yeah and that's the thing about getting behind you know 40 50 60 yards and calling you don't know what's going on if you can't see mm -mm. and you're like that's you, right. the minute you start peeking around seeing what's going on he'll peg you oh or, yeah <laughs> and then it's game over <laughs> so you just kind of wait and the next thing we know the bull's coming in from behind us so we we literally We literally ran. looked at each other and we took off running <laughs> the opposite direction like holy smokes because he went from being kind of a distant possibility of a bull that we heard him we knew he was there but th then he was he was the main focus of uh, getting front in front and center like, when he walked out yeah. there he was the big dog yeah, yeah he, he was going to come over there and kick some ass yeah he let out a big bugle too yeah. right yeah. there yeah. when he was at 70 yeah. yards mm -hmm. behind the bush it was yeah. Pretty neat. Just as he came out in the meadow, he stopped and let out a big bugle. Mm -hmm. It's pretty and cool. Actually, if you watch the video, too, our calling, the timing was pretty good, too, because when he started kind of getting a little bit nervous, you know, Wes and I would do, you know, cow, calf, and then some estrus sounds, and then, you know, pause for a second, and then, you know, he was, you know, kind of looking, and then 
right when he looked like on video he was getting nervous, we started doing it again and lit up again. And that calmed him down a little or kept his curiosity. And, um, you know, the whole thing just, like you say, when you have that many people, there was, what, five of Four or five, six, six of us, six of us out there. How many of us was Talk there? Talk about pressure. Six when when people. you're the hunter, when you're the hunter, and you got two, three guides with her, and two cameramen, and you got to perform. It, it's, uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking. No I got to tell you, Dad had performance things. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, you just tune it right out. You don't even, yeah. you don't even think about it. All you're thinking about is that bull that just comes screaming across that mm -hmm. meadow, mm -hmm. and you're going, "Oh my God!" Oh and my he God. was so like I, I. The only disappointing part for me, I think, was not seeing him mm -hmm. when he came in. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and I love calling elk. Don't get me wrong. And when Dad shot, I looked at Wes, and I'm like, "Dad just shot," and I was like, "I mean, I heard it just smack." Mm -hmm. And you know, just the the only disappointment is that you don't get to see that. And when you know, looking at the video. When he steps out and he is so massive in size and just absolutely beautiful. His antlers are beautiful. His mane is beautiful. He's in perfect body condition. I mean, mm -hmm. he's just a big, exquisite animal. I mean, really majestic. Uh, yeah, the, the word there. majestic. Yeah. I mean, how else can you describe an elk mm -hmm. but other than majestic when Ab they look like that? Absolutely symmetrical rack. Yeah. I mean, he's just. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I can't be happier, I can tell you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and it, it you know it all came together so well and um you know just i mean you've been bow hunting a lot of time long time and you've taken a lot of elk with your bow but this is your best bull this is my best bull with a bow i got one better with a rifle but this is my best bull with a bow mm -hmm. yeah and definitely the most exciting it, yeah. it, it's the most exciting bull i've ever killed I, i've i've never had one come across the meadow and and it's just so massive yeah i mean just a massive bull it's, a lot of times you see bits and pieces coming through. Yeah, the brush exactly. You'll, they're coming through the timber, and you see a little bit of horn or a little bit of this. This was right out, right in your face. And like the sun was shining on him. It was, yeah. it was oh, yeah. so it beautiful. Was, yeah. 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 And it's a cool shot because with that sun, it just lit my fletchings up, and you, you just I just got to watch the fleshing bury right into him. So there was no question. You know, there was no question that was a dead bull. Yeah. That's the one cool part about this place is that there's so many bulls here that, like in that scenario, we were dinking with a couple bulls that we were going to try to get to, and then suddenly it just switches to another one because he comes in screaming. That's a cool part, I think. A lot of times mm -hmm. when you're hunting, like let's say that place in Oregon we mm -hmm. were in last week, you're focusing on one bull that has the cows, and there might be some satellite bulls, but they're not really dink because they're, they're smaller ones. They're not really dinking with you too much, or, or they come in quiet, right? Here you have numerous bulls bugling around you, and that's kind of cool. You're in the middle of it, and if one doesn't work out, you can you can switch to the next one. And there's a lot of opportunity here, and the terrain is ideal for for uh, these calling setups that we did. Uh, well, when they're down low, it is. When they're up high, well, it's not, a little yeah, harder. Well, yeah, <laughs> the terrain varies <laughs> tremendously yeah. here, from yeah. down here in the flats to up on a mountain, where it's again, right. it's it's heavy timber. It's nasty up yeah, there, but nasty. like where, where you shot your boy yesterday is perfect terrain. Yeah. Like that's oh, you can literally just move around mm -hmm. anywhere and mm -hmm. get in position, right? It's, and that's the cool part. Like most times, you can actually watch what's ha what's happening, mm -hmm. right? You can see the animals move through uh, instead of being in the dark timber, and it's like. You know, you don't mm -hmm. see any, you hear stuff, and then you might see a glimpse of it. And but if you're by yourself, you might work your way around, but you sound like right. I heard a cow. Oh, with it's six horrible. People. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is the challenge, too, is having that many people and trying to line it up and make it work. And, um, and you know, when you have a camera over your shoulder and all this, this other stuff, there's so many more bodies for that animal to key in on and and just blow amazing the whole me set. we can pull it off with this many people yeah. it just it just blows me away yeah it it uh it was a perfect day and i you know i'm so thankful for how it a came little nerve-wracking at the end we give that bull a couple hours oh we went to town and had lunch and uh got back and no blood there, there was no one little drop of blood where i shot him and a tough blood trail no blood trail. There no. was no well, blood trail. There was, For there 50 was, yards, there was, there was a couple drops. Yeah. You couldn't tell which way right. he went out. He, he lined out in it. a direction, kind of. And, and it is so thick in there. You know, there's like six of us, and we spent, the bull went literally 100 yards. That's it. 100 yards. Six of us spent two hours before 
my lovely daughter. Oh, yeah, I got lucky. Pretty much stepped on him because that's what you had to do. It was oh. so thick in there. We, well, Wes we was 27 right yards from it. Times. I had my Onyx track on, and we went back and looked, and I was within 28 yards of that yeah. bull, and there's no way I could have seen right. him. Nope. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I just got lucky. I circled around to a lower meadow, and I had cut some cow tracks, cow elk tracks, and I was like, well. And then I used my Onyx to do a direction of where the meadow was where Dad had shot him because I knew he was, the blood that we had, he kind of lined out in a straight line, angling slightly to the right. And so what I did is I just took my Onyx and I was trying to get my body into position in that lower part. I actually saw Yogi down there and I told him, I was like, I'm just going to keep trying to work around to where I get into position where I think, you know, I'm straight line from where Dad shot. And that's where I cut those cow tracks. And when I looked up the ridge there was a bunch of, you know, rubs and stuff. And I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe this is his bedroom. I mean, I'm not, he might not have ever been in there. He might not have made those rubs, but it was a place where a bull, you know, felt comfortable living. They hang out in there a lot. So I started working in there and I just went, you know, I saw all these beds and I just went bed to bed and I was staring, you know, looking for blood in in the beds. And I, I, dad called me, you guys see anything? I'm like, no. And I'm like, I'm in a bedroom looking at all these beds and I'm staring at this bed and I just look up and I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God, dad, I'm looking at your bull. <laughs> like I, and it, it, was it was so neat. Cool. Yeah. Cause I was on the phone with him and he was there and you know, and after then I, two hours we were getting concerned. Yeah. yeah you know, you always, screamed. there's always that little bit of doubt. Oh, I started screaming. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> well, because I, I mean, I wanted everybody to know and I didn't, I mean, how you call everybody right now? I mean, and you couldn't fire off that bull. We had to go find her. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm not leaving the bull. You guys come to me because I'm not leaving it. Um, no, it was, uh, it was a super great way to find it too. And, you know, it did sit for a couple hours and it is hot, but for the record is the meat is all in great shape. Yep. We got really lucky with we that. We got it down, got it to a processor version. Yeah, good. we got it down. We got it to the cooler. <clears throat> they're, they're cutting and wrapping it today and freezing it. Normally we'd like to do it ourselves, but we're not really in the position to do that right no. now. So, um. Luckily he died in the kind of shady spot like in the thing yeah, yeah. He was it in wasn't out in the sun yeah. you know because mm-hmm. he was stiff when we got up there pretty yeah, much yeah he and was stiff which means he he did a mad dash of 100 150 yards that, from that where bull he was shot dead him, in 30 seconds and he died right away he yeah was, that bull right. was dead in 30 yeah. seconds so but when you're talking archery you, you know you never know that right and so i've watched bulls that took hours to die mm-hmm. and you know, and they can get up and take off and go, and you don't want that to happen. No. Mm-hmm. There's no way to track them in that stuff unless they're really bleeding. And, right. He uh, was not. So, mm-hmm. No. no he well, and then bleeding. when we started working on him, the, I mean, everything stayed inside him. Yeah, he was full of blood. It just, com- I mean, it was like a river poured out of him. It was crazy. Um, just. The broadhead did its job. It just, for you know, normally those bulls will spit up. Yeah. They'll cough up blood. Right. He didn't spit and up he anything. Didn't cough, no. he, and the yeah. way he died so fast, he didn't cough. And the up. and the way he was running downhill, with the with the arrow in him from mm-hmm. behind and above, and above, there was no way for the blood to drip out of him. Right. No. So it yeah. stayed in there. Right. So. Well, and we arrow, never did find the arrow. No, he broke well, it. Must have broke off. Well, well the, the broke off the half. Broke off part, yeah. 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 We never found the half that no. broke no. though. I mean, the other half stayed in him. You can go back and look for it if you want. No, I'm yeah, good. There you go. No matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx. How many bulls do you think it was bugling that first morning? These right five at, at dark. These yeah. five. Yeah. At oh, it was insane. We pulled. pulled there was up five there. that were close. I yeah. think. And it was still dark. And uh, almost immediately. Not <laughs> almost immediately. Yeah, I mean it was immediately. It was I didn't one cow call. I didn't even. One cow call, and they went machine crazy. Machine shut no. down. <laughs> I thought it was someone's cell phone with an elk bugle as a ringtone. <laughs> I'm like, who has the elk bugle as a ringtone? Because we literally just shot off our side by side. And, like, you don't normally 
roll up and just start bugling off your side by side. I mean, that's not the way it works, right? So I was like, what is going on? And, man, we drove right into him. Um, that was insane. Like, right into him. And then it was fun just to, you know, sit and wait for daylight. Because, like, I mean, w- that's what keeps you coming back to elk hunting. Because all year long you think about that moment. Like, hearing that and being part of that. And it's probably one of the most magical times of the year, if not, like, the most. That's why elk hunting is so addicting. And you're like, man, <laughs> this is what I waited all year for. And, and we got cool. in way early because we were planning to go up the hill. Yeah. And we stopped there just to make sure there's nothing close before we drive through everything and sure it was. i just opened my door and heard that thing bugle at under 100 yards yeah and right. we sat there till legal shooting light it took which was forever the longest a good 20 30 minutes, minutes yeah. wasn't 20, it? 20 30 minutes yeah well yeah because you're sitting there and you have an elk less than 100 yards away and you're, all you need is the wind to swirl yep. and party's over and before gone. daylight <laughs> even breaks and speaking of wind that was in our advantage that day because it's quite, quite windy when mm-hmm. we came up there and they didn't hear the quads coming up no. the hill at all because you're coming up a canyon and then you just stop when you crest and the wind was blowing down the canyon so they wouldn't even hear us come up that's perfect well they obviously didn't hear us yeah, you drove right, and they were busy you know obviously they were busy yeah. running so yeah. <laughs> that bull just had what one cow and a calf yeah, that's what we cow. saw yeah. but i mean there might have been more but he had a bull below him that he was pissed off at and he was going down there to fight him so we we tried to call him back up, right? And luckily the cow was in there hanging around. She didn't move down, so he stayed. And then the, in that canyon to our left, when we came up, there was two or th- three bulls in there screaming. Yeah. There was a different rut party going on down there. It was kind of cool. It was awesome. Yeah, I know with the bulls you heard in the distance, there was probably 10 or 12 bulls yeah. that you could actually hear from that one spot. Yeah. And somehow we just didn't get the stars to align. That that's elk hunting too, you know. Yeah. Not even, that day. Even no. when there's that many elk, it's not easy. It, it's no. Uh, Still hunting. There's so many yeah. things can go wrong. So many things can go wrong. But do you have to always start in the in the good spot when yes. there's elk? Yeah. And mm-hmm. this is definitely one of them because I mean, the uh, circumstances with that many bulls in one spot is perfect, you mm-hmm. know, because you can just you can pretty much just sit there and listen to them. And you could get lucky just have one walk past you because they're chasing each other around. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's... Uh, I've always figured about one in ten setups, you'll you'll get a shot. Maybe one in ten. It, it might be better here. I would imagine it's probably overall. Here, yeah. Overall, well, I know I've been on streaks where it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But exactly. then Some you never when know it's on, when it's on. Yeah. When well, like last week, you had these mosquitoes. Uh, last week, you had a rough week, so it's not always... Yeah. yeah, and you know there's elk there. It's just, not, just not the talking. timing's not right. Mm-hmm. And with archery, if you can't actually see them, it's archery's pretty a tough go. Well, we looked in a couple holes yesterday morning before we got on your bull, and we'd walk over, and you're like, "Yeah, last year we took off into here, da da da," and I'm like, "Yeah, nothing's talking. We're not going. <laughs> we don't need to go beat the bush uh, down in a canyon for nothing that we well, can't." Well, we hear. we actually spotted one real nice bull. A long ways away, and, and drove all the way around there, and got down in there and set up, and he wouldn't, he wasn't talking. No, he, he wasn't. We did anything. hear a bull bugle once or twice, yeah. and then I think the wind, the wind got swirled. To us and mm-hmm. That's the other thing in this kind of terrain. There's so many little canyons, and ah, it's endless. Yeah, and then the wind just does what it wants. It wants to do, really, you know. He, even well, if you have a steady wind, and if you crest over into a little ravine, and it switches on you. Right? And these elk are just like any other elk. When they have their mind set to go somewhere. They're going, and so sometimes it's hard to change their mind or change right. their course, and and or to keep up with them, or to keep especially <laughs> if you fast. get behind them. Yeah, right you now. get yeah. behind them. It's a struggle. They move mm-hmm. so fast and effortlessly, you know. Well, the first night we went into that wallow, and there was three bulls just screaming their head off. We had the perfect setup, you know, wind blowing down wind to us. Wind was doing this, and that bull probably got within thirty yards. We couldn't see him, and all of a sudden wind on her neck and mm. he was gone heard Game some over. crashing and yeah we had that a few times in oregon yeah <laughs> then we tried to go back in there the next day quiet well it wasn't so much it was quiet we didn't even get to the wallows and the wind was absolutely blowing right to the wall yeah. yeah when we started we it was good until the time we got there yeah. even close yeah it was just completely opposite yep 
So that's what makes it fun though. If it, if it was easy, and it's never easy, you know, sometimes, sometimes it is, but. Well, we got, I just feel like we got so fortunate. I mean, yeah. I've been elk hunting a long time. You've been elk hunting a long time. And it, it takes a lot to get it together, especially on a bull of this age. Um, These mature bulls yeah. are tough. You got to have a lot of things really work in your favor and, and to have it happen and come together when it does. It's the most incredible thing. But those close calls and these, you know, wind switches and these encounters, man, that's what keeps us coming back. Because you're one encounter closer to it coming together. There's a lot of decisions yeah. in a short amount of time when it yeah. Yeah. When you get close to the the bull you're here. Yeah. The cool part is hearing so many bulls bugle. Like comparing it to last week when we were hunting in mm -hmm. Oregon. So different. You know, well, I mean, it's obviously I think the timing too. Yeah. Timing is timing too. a big part of it, but because they then, started lighting up more when we left Oregon right, too. Right, right. But it's just I'm saying that's like if you compare it to that, yeah. that hunt, this is like the the acoustics are way better, yeah. right? And it's so fun to hear it because it makes it so much easier to locate them, obviously, mm -hmm. and then make a plan. And that's a big part with the wind of and what you have to do for right. archery hunting. Mm -hmm. is, yeah, you know, find that bugling bull because. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of spot in stock, I wouldn't imagine, for archery. No. Not in this kind Especially of terrain. Especially not where we were over there, yeah. Not yeah. there, no. There well, where this bull was living, there was no spot in stock. Yeah. <laughs> this, this bull was living in stuff you couldn't already crawl through, which is why we had a hard time locating him after he was shot. But that's where he was living. That was his bedroom. Yeah. There is no way to do a spot in stock on a nope, bull like that. Nope, you you have to call down. there. Yogi and I did. We stalked one last week, though. We... We were in that hole I was telling you guys about that was super deep and dark, and he's. He, we were hoping they'd come down to this creek and water because we'd heard them walking around the day before, and even that morning we heard him. We heard the bull walking around, but he didn't come down to where we were kind of set up and positioned because it was so hot, really, and they weren't talking. The only thing we could really figure is try to get in their bedroom where they're safe and, you know, to a source of something that they might go to, and water was the answer for that, and... You know, the bull, we heard him, but, you know, nothing happened. And then so we ended up walking up the creek. Yogi's idea was, hey, let's go up this creek. We'll use the creek to disguise our sound and try to see if we can see one milling around or something in some of these very sparse open patches. <laughs> and we did. It, so we ended up going up, up out of the creek and up on the ridge. And he almost stopped me to cow call before I crested the ridge. But I don't like cow calling or calling for that matter usually is a general rule of thumb for me. I want to be on the top of that ridge face because if I call and a bull comes in and I'm over the ridge, they'll look down over at me and I, all I see is a head. I don't get a shot, you know. So for me, my inclination was, well, I just want to get to this flat part where the ridge flattens out. You know, we come up out of this bottom and then I'll hit the call. And as soon as we did that, we were 15 steps from a bull bed. And it's like, whoops. <laughs> he did not stick around long. <laughs> Great idea. Whoops. Very well executed, but not, uh, didn't quite not completed. Yeah, it didn't no. quite get completed. It was like, oh. And Yogi's know, like, I almost told you to call five steps back, but I wouldn't have done it anyway. I would have argued with him. <laughs> because I'd have been like, no. He's, Naturally. If there's a bull, he's going to look over the edge and, you know, it's going to be game over. I mean, that's the worst thing is when you see one just peek over and look down at you. You want him to come either down and have to commit down or you are committed up. And, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We maybe should have set up, you know, down in that bottom and tried another call set or so. I don't know. I, but I, the thing is, we went know. back a couple of days later and did a call set in that Same below spot. where he was bedded that day when we jumped him. And he came in quiet. Yeah. And yeah. then he he busted out when he came yeah. downwind from us. So, you know, if it they're was not so talking, thick, it's though. Tough. He was within range. Oh, yeah. He was probably 20 or 30 yards from us. And he was going to have to be like 15 for a shot. Like he was living in some thick stuff. And he, we heard him walking. Mm -hmm. And then we heard him crash away kind of. And he really didn't even crash that loudly. It's amazing <laughs> how quiet they are in something that thick. Like I can't hardly walk through brush and not make a sound. And they like slip through it like little mm -hmm. little ghosts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Well, one of my favorite stocks was that six by seven in the Ochicos. 
and we got him to bugle first thing in the morning. I remember about eight o'clock, and he was down. He was in his bedroom, and Christy literally spent six hours crawling down through there, and I, I stayed oh, up on yeah. the hill. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And I, you know, every, every once in a while she was texting me, you know, call, you know, cow call, bugle, and and we could get him to talk. You know, if I didn't, we didn't push him hard. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't sit up there. And, just call steady, but every 20 minutes or so I'd call and he'd answer. And she spent six hours crawling down through there with no shoes on and, and stuck that bowl. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I slipped into his bedroom. Yep, right into his bedroom. He actually had cows, it was pretty interesting. I heard something walking, cause I would, I'd walk and I'd sit and I'd take my glass and just look. And I mean, I was like a little ninja moving through the forest cause it was, it's pretty open forest. And I heard something walking, and um, his cows came up around behind me. And then he came out, and he was panting, like, like out of breath, just like, <sighs> I mean, I don't know what they've been doing, but um, he, <laughs> he was just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> tongue out, practically Just like me panting. walking up the hill. It's yeah, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was insane. And then he just walked, do, 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 and he was just skirting parallel to his cows which happened to just go be above me and uh you know 30 yards he just walked he didn't know i was there no clue and he was in my downwind side he didn't care he was in that moment mm -hmm. of life where yeah. he was real dumb because <laughs> his cows were um or wait no the cows came in to because it was it was later in the morning so the wind was going up so his cows came into my uh my uh, my downwind side and i think that they must have kind of boogied out of there and then he was on on the on the good side and didn't realize maybe what had happened he just and wanted to keep up with the cows yeah it was, afternoon was, just, by time yeah, it was afternoon yeah. when i shot him so yeah i had to think about that for a second so mm -hmm. the cows i think caught my wind and then he was just still slipping through you know and that it worked really well i mean if i don't have to on public land especially if i don't have to talk to him i would prefer to really get close and not talk to him because Anytime you light up on them, you don't know how they're going to react depending you give on away pressure. Your position yeah. and, and I was two or three hundred yards above. Be looking him, for something. You know, so yeah. uh, it was. He wasn't worried about me because I was a long ways away yeah. from him. Dad was it's, just keeping him bugling I in his bed. I just kept him bugling you know? enough to where she could keep him located. Yeah. A lot of times, what happens in those scenarios is the cows will probably bust you oh, before you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. I just got lucky. I had yeah, a friend yeah, who got lucky. who Elk did a three-hour stalk on one of these bulls that he managed to. Or he happened to see it. It's in uh, a lot of deadfall, just yeah. broken timber. And he ma he took his shoes off, did a three-hour stalk, and he didn't see this one cow bedded in front of him till he was like ten feet from it. Oh, oh no! Boy. And at that point, the cows kind of knew something was up. The bull was still at forty yards. He's bedded behind a pine log. And when he got up, there's this little pine stubby you know three four inches long that's right by his vitals mm -hmm. the log's low enough and my buddy's like well he'll clear that log what are the chances he'll hit that right <laughs> pretty good i guess pretty good <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've done that actually <laughs> yeah he hit the one thing yeah he hit the one thing that was there was he aiming for that thing though well he probably had his eye on it and <laughs> yeah. He hit it. yeah he had his eye on it too much yeah, yeah. exactly Mur murder's trick you had that happen <clears throat> That big six by six up on top that my bow was broken and he snuck in on us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to think yeah. about which bull you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, we he, the bull crossed it like 50 yards below me. And there I'm was. I'm the only one that's seen it and my bow's broken. His bow is broken. fell down, yeah. broke my bow. And, and she's, we're, it's middle of the afternoon. We're not even expecting to I'm see a I'm eating bowl. lunch or something. Yeah, we're eating I don't lunch know. and she's on, you know, it's got both thumbs going 90 miles an hour. I don't, I don't, I think I, that was pre, there's no filter up And there was a pile of rocks there. out there He's at about 100 yards. And, and I see the tops of his horns He's coming around that <laughs> pile of rocks. And he come around and stop right in front of us, 50 yards broadside. And she doesn't have her bow in her hand. <laughs> no, and he's looking right at us. And so I had to wait for him to get in the timber and, um. Well, you went around big juniper. Yeah, and, and when there's... you went around big juniper, she got her bow and got drawn. Got drawn and one little limb hanging down. One and what? the one limb. So it was like a cast forest, <laughs> and it's it's ponderosas and there's like kind of like bare snags that'll kind of poke down to the ground. And I hit one of those. Yep. Like, why, God, why? <laughs> 
Yeah, that was my pilot episode for Pursue the Wild. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, stuff doesn't always go well. <laughs> Even when it goes hunting. well, it doesn't sometimes go elk well. Elk hunting is probably the hardest thing we do, and I, it's probably what keeps us coming back. Yeah. The memories oh, is yeah. what keeps you coming back, right? And then yeah. you keep talking about Lots them. Of and that's the cool part, I think. Mm -hmm. I We've mean, had so many cool things happen, I forget. Like, mm -hmm. I have to stop and think, oh, yeah, you know, because we've had so many incredible mm -hmm. Yeah, the bull that tried to mount you. Oh, geez, Dad. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And that's a wrap. I, oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> she's doing, she's the caller. At, we got to hurt it. We heard a bull. And I crawl up there and get set up. And there, I mean, there's a there's six bulls in this herd and probably 20 cows. And, and one of them is, is like close to a 400 bull. I mean, he's a smoking bull. And I got him 100 yards above me. And Christy's down behind me calling, and she called in a spike bull. <laughs> oh, it was on top of me. And he was so, on top of her. <laughs> here's the thing. The experience um, that, you know, now in this situation, I would have just ran the spike off, right? Like, now I would just stood up and, like, get away. Instead, get out of she here. shut up. And I'm sitting up there <laughs> looking at this giant bull. He wasn't going to come. And anyway. I'm saying, you know, Christy, <laughs> do something. Else. Call. Do something. Call. Well, he stood there for a couple minutes and off they went <laughs> should you tell him what you actually the advice you gave me after the encounter uh, no i won't say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay dad thanks <laughs> do whatever you, you have to do christy but don't quit calling you gotta yeah. finish the story yeah that's basically what he said yeah <laughs> to be continued yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah lots of stories like that we go on all night about that yes uh we spend that much time out there it's just yeah pretty cool what'll happen sometimes yeah. yeah and you're i'm excited to now have yogi out here doing this stuff with us because you've elk hunted a couple times but oh yeah i've i've never really archery elk hunted during the rut um that much um i have elk hunted in in canada before but that's well it's been in the rut but it's ri rifle hunting yeah. mainly and uh different different terrain different country and your problem is you'll get you usually got clients it, and you're with the clients, but you right. don't get to do it. Right. Oh, next year you need to get the tags. Yeah, and, that's right. You need well, to next year we'll have Wyoming tags. Yeah, we will. So we'll that's be hunting next year. So, yeah. yeah, we have a lot to look yeah, forward to right. with our relocation. I mean, that's one of the reasons we moved is mm -hmm. why are we Wyoming? Because we, you know, we love the outdoors. And mm -hmm. as a married couple, we have just so much more opportunity there. Yeah. So now it's going to be exciting. Even this year already, it's going to be. Yeah going to be good with all the tags we, mm -hmm. we have. So, And it's beautiful up there. There's so much wildlife. Don't tell anyone. It's really cold and, and windy. windy. <laughs> yeah, don't come that in. is the only disadvantage <laughs> about yeah, Wyoming. So I, is Wyoming's windy. terrible. It's cold, windy, miserable. <laughs> the people suck. Hot, dry in the summer. <laughs> Clearly, we yeah. live there. So a lot of mean people get. there. Don't come yeah. to Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just needed a resident to go on the wilderness area with. Oh, yeah. Okay, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay here, Shed. Wes is a glutton for punishment. <laughs> he literally drove to um, to the Book Cliffs unit when I had that tag last fall and spent a couple days hunting with us to try to help me dig out a big deer. And That's what um, he said. He really was shed hunting. <laughs> <laughs> there, you guys are pretty competitive about that. But I must admit, Yogi did walk by two in the Steens, and I picked him up this year. So there. Ha -ha. Well, the worst, the worst case I ever seen for that, and we just got this buck mounted. Me and her coming off the mountain. We were elk hunting. We were elk hunting. Yeah, archery elk hunting. <laughs> and we're coming down through a big meadow, and the grass is, you know, a foot tall or so. Mosquito. And yeah. I literally stepped right over the top of a set of sheds, both sides, and she's behind me, and she reaches down and pick them up, and it's a 200-inch mule deer. <laughs> <laughs> literally, I walk right over the top of it. She that picks up both sides. Well, in his defense, it's dark and he's old, so his eyesight's yeah. not as good. But um, it, I just the grass was laid over funny, and it just didn't look right. And I was like, I just for whatever reason in my stomach was like, that's not a log. What is that? And I just picked up both sides in one scoop and I could was have been like, a snake too <laughs> now in my defense she says my eyes aren't as good the next day i found the smallest shed one i've ever seen it, that, it was a spike shed about that long yeah, and i spotted that with right no there. problem picked it right up well, that's the you, real challenge this is right a real there. professional here yeah. these big ones are easy these are tough that's why i like to keep them cleaned up they're trip hazard <laughs> <laughs> that's right 
the other trip. Yeah. Well, and that was so funny because then the rest of the week we were both like trying to eagle eye everywhere, you know. Cause, and you know the sad thing about that bug? I don't think anybody ever harvested him. He's out there somewhere. Like no, we think he died it. of old age. Yeah. But nobody. You, you would have heard about him. We would have heard about a buck of that class. Yeah. And, and he just gorgeous. We had, she had him mounted. I had him mounted, yeah. I just got him in here about two weeks ago. And, and the, and the book clips one, too. And the book clips one, yeah. Yes. They're joined now yeah. in the trophy room. They're beautiful. Both bucks are yeah. beautiful. Well, I sent Wes a picture of that book clips buck. I'm like, I don't know, Wes, would you shoot it? He's like, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> 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 but it's fun because you just like to explore. And, and that's what's so great about like hunting in different places. You meet people and you become friends that go beyond everything. And we're looking forward to hunting with you in Wyoming. And <laughs> we're going to come down here and try to pick up some sheds. And uh, it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Well, you guys want to go have dinner? Yes. Let's get away from these mosquitoes. I'm just saying that because... <laughs> the mosquitoes already have else. Yeah. You know, I'm really surprised nobody has mentioned my morning. I'm, I, I am really surprised right <laughs> now. I wasn't sure we were allowed to. I, I, yeah. I, I don't want to get trouble. That's a whole other hour. <laughs> yeah, we got a green light now. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm in enough trouble. I, say, I, don't, I don't need to get I more say trouble. we want to go to dinner. It, my dad makes a margarita that he's really famous for. And um, his margaritas will bend your ear like yeah it'll make you crawl yeah you you crawl <laughs> yeah and i and she was crawling well no i so i the other night i was like i'm not having one of dad's margaritas because i'm not being hung over i'm not i'm not having a margarita <laughs> but last night we were celebrating the bowl and everybody's so excited and i'm like i have a margarita i had one margarita and I was like, oh, we're going to get up in the morning. We'll go do all this stuff this morning, da-da-da. And I was sick as a dog. I felt fine. You're a seasoned <laughs> professional. He had two margaritas so did and I. a giant glass of wine. Yogi had two. Yeah. I'm dying from one. Like, Wes, you had one. You had one. And wine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and wine. But it was good dinner, too. Like, Johnny had brought. Uh, Axis deer burgers. Axis deer yeah. burgers. Elk sausage. Uh, elk sausage. Two kinds of sausage. Pig sausage also yeah. from their from yeah. their pig home raised pig. Homemade fries. Yeah, that was great. And was then really mixed dinner. with those margaritas it was perfect. Oh. We had a, we had a good evening last night. Yeah. Yes, I did not. And have the a mosquitoes good are having a good evening tonight. Yeah, they are. They're coming perfect. out. <laughs> yeah, I was so sick. I'm like, I'm not. This is why I got off tequila for like 12 years. <laughs> I, I'm just such a lightweight. So, anyway, I really celebrated last night, and I really paid for it this morning. Thank you, Dad. You're I, welcome. You're literally <laughs> trying to kill me out here, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But I think that, like, really made the whole trip extremely memorable. Wes is going to be telling the story. He was taking photos of me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the couch, like, I was, like, shivering. We were going <laughs> like, to go out for those sunrise pictures. And it did not happen. Just missed it by two hours. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was still up. Yeah, it was <laughs> still up. Yeah. Pounding on my door at 5.30 this morning. You know, and we've been getting up at 3 o'clock, and I'm exhausted. Because pounding on my door at 5.30, and I said, why do we have to get up this morning? We're, you know, we're done. <clears throat> well, we need to get the sunset. And I said. Sunrise. Or, or, yeah, sun, excuse me, sunrise. Why? Yeah, I didn't, we didn't make it. Well, we, we also had it. to wait for him to shower and coffee and da-di-da. And well, I yeah. just, exactly. I, I mean, he takes I an hour. Pretty. He's worse than a woman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he takes so long in the morning. Like, we wake up two hours before we have to go hunting usually because he likes to sit. Well, it's two cups of coffee, coffee and, and then you got to put your head underwater just to wake up, you know. It was getting to that point. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brutal. Yeah. But we enjoyed every bit of this week, and we appreciate you guys so much again. And um, Same here. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Looking forward to coming back next year. Yeah, keep some of those bulls around. Yeah. We'll try to fence them in. <laughs> yeah, and we've here. been, we, I've killed <laughs> a couple mule deer with you now, a couple few elk now, a black bear. We're just, uh, yeah, we've had a good time. Good run. What's next? Antelope? Maybe. We'll see. Never know. Could happen. Thank you guys for tuning in for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast from Colorado Elk Country. Congratulations, Dad, on your beautiful bull. Thank you. I'm really proud of you. Thanks to my daughter. And? And my wonderful guides. Yeah. Congratulations, Lewis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Especially Jake. This first year I got to hunt with Jake, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Riding we feel with him sorry every day. for Jake, actually. <laughs> 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 huh? 
<laughs> what? Nothing. Wes warned me when I was walking in. Too. <laughs> I didn't give you all the details. No. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah, he needed some help. He didn't want to scare me away. <laughs> well, we have a lot of common. So. Yeah, no. I reeled him in first and got him committed, and then yeah. he kind of had no way out. Yeah. <clears throat> That's kind of what Yogi did when we got married. Yep. Reeled me in, I got committed, and now there's no way out. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys, thank you. We'll see you later. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.